interesting stream today compared to some of the past ones we've had. How is everybody doing? The name of that song is Undefeatable. It's from the Sonic Frontiers soundtrack. It is available on Spotify and Apple Music. I don't know about the rest of the platforms, but banger song. They got a lot of banger songs on that soundtrack too. So definitely be sure to check them out. I actually just started playing the Sonic DLC today and uh, God, is it hard. I was struggling, struggling real bad. Totally Jackson, what's going on? Thank you for the super chat. We back again. Thank you, sir. Late tickets. Thank you for becoming a member. Welcome in. By the way, I think my YouTube channel glitched like right before we started and uh, a members only video went public for some reason. I don't know why. I didn't have it scheduled for right now, but it just went public. It's the edited SpongeBob video from a few streams ago. Very odd. Um, a few things I want to talk about before we get started today. Flashstorm, thank you for the $5 super chat. I will not be doing that. That was sus. <laughs> Moon, thank you for the $5 super chat. It's October. Hype as fuck, best month for sure. I'm going to be decorating for Halloween soon. I got to get my Halloween decorations out of the attic. And then we'll, uh, then we'll get to that. Someone just commented I should post my videos on Rumble. I definitely will not be doing that. Um... So, a few things I want to talk about today before we get started. Uh, the urban spook situation. If you haven't seen it, I uploaded a video like three hours ago talking about um, how I won't be covering urban spook anymore. Uh, if you're curious why, all the reasons are in that video. Um, I thought there was going to be a lot of negative reception on that, but a lot of people uh, responded very positively to that. So, I appreciate you guys for that, for understanding and being so nice. I've been debating that since like the last two Urban Spook videos. Uh, I've talked to my mods about it like plenty of times. And uh, finally I was like, all right, I think, I think I'm not covering this anymore because recently there's just been too much. But yeah, we won't be covering Urban Spook anymore. So that is that. Um, like I said, if you want to go know all the exact reasons, make sure to go watch that video. But do not ask me anymore. Don't comment under the videos anymore because I won't be covering it. Um, in today's stream, though, we're going over one of the best analog horror series on YouTube, in my opinion. Uh, just because of the amount of detail, the jump scares, the world building in it. I think it is so good. We're going over Greylock today. Uh, Greylock is created by Rob, uh, Rob Gavigan. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. You guys know I'm ter terrible at pronouncing things. But um, they're up to video 10 now. And I was going to watch a video 10. And then I was like, I remember watching video 9 and being like, oh my god, I don't remember everybody's names. I don't remember all the details of the series. So today we're just going to rewatch it. We're going to go through it all. I'm going to be taking like heavy, heavy notes. Matt, what's going on? I see you in chat. Our guy Matt Reeves in chat has also worked out a ton on this series with Rob. They do incredible work together. Seriously, you guys are going to watch quite the series today. But we're watching it just because I want to take notes. I want to write down everybody's names so that we can remember them and everything. Because I felt like I just started forgetting details. And I never took notes on Greylock like I have other series. So we're going to go through. It's very important to remember characters for tape 10. Perfect. I'm happy that we know that because I totally would have been screwed in this new video. Um, there was also a few things I missed like you guys would comment here and there like oh you missed like this flash of text or this flashed image So I usually try to notice them the best I can but sometimes I sometimes I miss them, you know, it just happens Hamza, thank you for the 40 W chat. Thank you for the super chat. Do you want to sit? Thank you for the five I have a question. What's your opinion on stop-motion analog horror? I actually think um, Stop-motion horror videos in general whether it's analog horror or not is actually really cool and can be done really well sometimes I'm trying to think of an example. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but there's definitely been some good ones that I watched. Feel free to recommend them in the Discord if you guys know any. There are so many videos I have to make, it's not even funny, but I want to get my Greylock video done first. So we're going through tapes one through nine today, which I've seen, but we're gonna watch them again. And then tape 10, I have not seen yet. So we'll be watching that for the first time together. Um, I don't even know how long the series is. I wanna say it's, it's definitely over an hour, maybe an hour and a half total. So we'll see. Um, what else? Did I miss anything else? I think we're good for right now. But alright. Let's 
get started. I always like to try to get started right away just because uh, these streams go on for a long time with all the stuff we're going to watch. Uh, Alright, I do got my energy drink here. We'll take a break like around like video 5. Everybody could go run to a bat to the bathroom just like we did last stream or something. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Let's jump right in. If you've never seen Greylock before, you're in for something. You're in for a treat today. So, why is it called Greylock? You will see. Minoxa, what's going on? I see you in chat. Greylock seems to cover things really out of order, so don't try to think too linearly that's another thing too is that i noticed there's a lot of dates and stuff and i never had like a solid timeline so i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to go crazy with the notes today and try to make a timeline and uh write down all the names and their significance and whatnot here we go tape number one by the way let me just make sure i don't think there's captions yeah it's just auto generated We'll go back. Extraction initiated. Data extraction, 10% complete. Data extraction, 4% complete. Data extraction, 80% complete. Data extraction, complete. All data extracted to error. No okay. All right. Wow. <laughs> I forgot it ends really abruptly on that one. Um. So there are a few like glitchy things that happen here. Okay. Offline. Uh. Let me see if I can get like a clear image here. Technician immediately. What does this part say? Con act on site. Can't act on site. Con act on site. Can't act on site. Right? Maybe. I'm getting red flags from this already. Don't worry. We're, dude. I I love this series. I love showing people this series for the first time because it is so so well done. Guys, if you haven't already, uh, the link to... Dude, what is going on? Why does this always happen? Every time I make this live, the live things, it, like, adds a second YouTuber's name in there. Mr. Manticore, I love you, but you're not who we're going over today. Uh, why... What? Bro? Chat, I swear my cha Mr. Manticore is possessing my channel. What is this, dude? Just just take a look at this, right? I think I can show this, yeah. <laughs> so, in the description, it shows Mr. Manticore's at and Greylock's at. Ready? I take out Mr. Manticore's, right? Save? No, dude, there's no way. I did that three times just now, and three times it showed back up. And the one time I showed chat, it didn't happen. Okay, dude, whatever. Um, but go check the description. Subscribe to the Greylock channel, please. And please, if you ever get a chance, go watch the videos for yourself. You might know, notice something that I missed. Uh, or it could mean continue, too. Continue act on in sight. On sight. There was another one, too, right? Another error at some point. Let me see if I can find that first one. Or was that first error? It did. It happened twice. Oh, it was right there. 
I think it's the same message. Again, even still, after watching like what we're caught up to, I still not 100% sure what's up with the whole computer thing, the Simeodyne computer. But contact on site. Okay, thank you. Thank you, chat. Thank you. <laughs> Remember, scream at me if you have to so that I get it. Contact on site technician. Okay. Copy, copy. See, so yeah, I still am not 100% sure what's going on with this one. There's nothing in the description either for this one. I know they start they started adding stuff in the description. This is uh this one's a little better to understand after you watch the later videos. It's contact on site technician immediately. Fatal error for a camera with location morgue. I'm writing that down. Hmm. No good that can come from the pursuit of darkness. Let me read to you, dear believer, the words of the late brilliant Charles Spurgeon, who discussed this at length in a sermon all the way back in 1864. He said, quote, our adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We are taught by our Lord Jesus to pray. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What we are taught to seek or shun in prayer, we should equally pursue or avoid in action. Very warily, therefore, should we endeavor to avoid temptation, seeking to walk in the yes, path of boy obedience, is. So that we may never be guilty of tempting the devil to tempt us. We are not to enter the thicket in search of the lion. We may pay dear. I'm sorry, I want to listen to that one more time. Pray, do not lead us into come from the pursuit of darkness. Let me read to you, dear believer, the words of the late brilliant Charles Spurgeon, who discussed this at length in a sermon all the way back in 1864. He said, quote, Our adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We are taught by our Lord Jesus to pray. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Hey, the creators here. Oh my God, we got both, both of the creators in here. Yo, what's going on, Rob? How are you? Welcome in, welcome in. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> Welcome in. Hold on, I need to pull up the chat on my on my other screen here because I cannot see anything. Yeah, Rob, I'm I was saying with chat, I we need to go over all this because I need to start writing down names and taking some serious notes. So we're going we're going back through the whole thing right now and then I'm gonna react to the to the newest video for the first time on here. What we are taught to seek or shun in prayer, we should equally pursue or avoid in action. Very warily, therefore, should we endeavor to avoid temptation, seeking to walk in the path of obedience, so that we may never be guilty of tempting the devil to tempt us. We are not to enter the thicket in search of the lion. We may pay dear... That's definitely not thrown in there for no reason. <laughs> notes aren't going to help you. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> no, I, I definitely got to take notes on names and stuff. Because every time I see a name now in the series, I'm like, wait, did they mention this person before? They definitely have. And then I got to go back. See, like, even this, I don't know who's recording this or when this might take place in the timeline. It is called To the Mountain. And we know a lot of this takes place at Greylock.
Is there any jump scares? Yes. to understand. to face with the devil himself whether we intended to or not dear believer we are drawn to him by our own hearts in Matthew chapter 15 verse 19 it says for out of the heart come evil thoughts murder adultery sexual immorality theft false witness slander there is a shadow Mr. Deep I think the tree is injured. Our minds, in a place most people Jackie Richards don't is going on. Exists within themselves. The devil is going to call to those depths, dear believer. And like, is there something at the end of the road there? The beast, or am I bugging? Because why is he flashing his lights like this? There's like a little something here, but I don't know if that's part of the road. You make it easier on yourself and accept what it is. That he bestows upon you. It's definitely important to note that that takes place in the winter. This is important. I really need to take notes on this section and how they say things here. Because I'm always thinking that everything in this series is a thought form. And I could just be completely wrong sometimes. So I definitely got to take some good notes here. Um. So to answer some of the super chats and stuff. Dude, why does it... It takes so long for me to see super chats on here. I'm waiting for it to refresh. <laughs> okay, there we go. Totally Jackson, thank you for the seven. <laughs> Knocks out Rob Gavigan and Immortal Forehead all in one stream. Incredible to see legends together. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mods, is there a way that you guys could ban Urban Spook from the chat? <laughs> like the, the term? <laughs> so I could stop seeing it? <laughs> chat i love you but i've given i told you my thoughts on it there's a video on it if you want to go see it uh i don't really want to hear about it anymore uh, i'm just waiting for one more oh uh blaze thank you for the super chat hello mark so you're gonna check out the rest of the walton files uh there is like a like goal that we put on the walton files video if it does hit that goal i will check out the rest of the walton files the only reason why i put the goals and stuff is just so i know that you guys still want me to check it out the walton files actually didn't do as good as i thought it would so i don't know um how interested people are in in that series cork thank you for the membership for three months hey are thought forms dateable Uh, I mean, I guess they could kind of be whatever you want them to be. So sure. Rate, a uh, rate two. Thank you for the dollar. Much appreciated. And Sam, thank you for the four. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the super chats, guys. I appreciate it. Be back in a few. No problem, Rob. Gotcha. God damn it. You guys found a way around saying urban spook already. Jesus. 
all right let's jump into this one this is definitely a ton of information i uh, already got something to write down here which is the name so this tape uh this video is said is intended for the sole use of alexander michael marsh subject id so we're gonna write that down Like I said, we're taking it a little bit slower today just because I want to take notes on all of these. I want to make sure I know what I'm talking about next time uh, we do the reactions for these. Believe it or not, usually when I first... Now, when I first start a series, I will take notes and stuff just so I can remember names and certain details and numbers and whatnot. But when I first started, like... I think I started covering Greylock six months ago or something like that i started looking at it and uh back then i like didn't take notes i kind of just like freestyled it because i was still in the early process of doing this so god damn it chat now you guys are just trolling me snets nuts thank you for the five dollar super chat hello marcus how's your day love you ps don't force yourself to make stuff you don't feel comfortable doing don't worry snuts nut i've learned my lesson and we will not be doing that anymore but thank you for the super chat i am having a good day and i hope you are as well are you gonna watch a monument mythos modern day videos yes but it is currently last on my list nothing against the series there's just a lot of stuff i want to cover before that all right here we go this is where we learn about one of the big things in the series greetings and welcome to the preconditional protocols and orientation video system provided by unit 13 as part of the united states army and project stargate created in partnership with simeodyne usa i already got a pause so unit 13 hold on go back say that again team as part of the united states army and project stargate created in partner okay so part of the u.s army and project stargate with Simeodyne USA. All of your thought form questions are about to be answered, chat. Oh, and then that say in partnership with Simeodyne? Eight, created in partnership with Simeodyne USA. On behalf of all of us here at Unit 13, congratulations on your selection as one of our testing candidates. You luckily have a lot of questions, and this video is designed to answer them all. First, let's go over some background information to provide you with the crucial context you'll need for a full understanding of what it is we're doing at Unit 13. We are sure you've heard plenty of rumors surrounding what it is that we do, but we are willing to bet that most everything you've heard is wrong. Being a highly confidential part of Project Stargate, which you've already been briefed on, Unit 13 studies a revolutionary and promising area of parapsychology. Thought forms. If you're unfamiliar with what thought forms are, that's okay. You're in the majority. So, what are thought forms? Through the ages, occultists and spiritualists, Tibetan monks to theosophists, have exercised the creation of what is sometimes referred to as a tulpa, otherwise known as a thought form. A thought form is the manifestation of a person's will, emotion, or other deeply psychologically energized state into a semi-physical form, existing as not only an extension of the person, but as its own independent and sentient entity. Thought forms are also able to be witnessed and experienced by third parties, and are not limited solely to the person who developed them. Thought forms have been formed to serve as familiars, companions, or even and experienced by third parties, and are not limited solely to the person who developed them. Thought forms have been formed to serve as familiars, companions, or even friends to those who conjure them. According to key literature, thought forms can be intentionally formed by a single person or multiple people, though they can be unintentionally formed as well. But they are always manifested through the deep will and focus of a person in a considerably heightened state of connectivity with their own consciousness. Traditional thought forms can vary widely in their level of influence in the real world. While they usually take physical formations eventually, their earliest stages are more apparitional in nature, with brief manifestations, though most often remaining as an unseen essence, much like a phantom or a ghost. At this phase, thought forms and ghosts are very similar in a number of ways. 
individuals can make contact with them through communication devices, such as a Ouija board or through EVP sessions, while the thought form may respond through moving objects, manipulating electronics, or even speaking words in short phrases. Due to their striking... Okay, so they can speak in short phrases. Now, what did it say? Mess with light and move physical objects? This is like the Bible to the series right now. <laughs> Similarities apparently very established important. by Unit 13 suggest that what we know as ghosts may not be as common as we once believed. Rather than a deceased person's energy being left behind after death, it's possible, and indeed likely, that these paranormal entities are actually thought forms that are unintentionally created by those individuals that the deceased has left behind, who spend inordinate amounts of time in deeply emotional states, where their mental capacity is largely occupied by a powerful focus on the departed individual. In other words, as these are the ideal conditions from which thought forms are born, people may very well create their own ghosts and hauntings. However... Did it say that they could be visibly seen, though? I know it says that they can move objects, they could mess with lights and whatnot, but did it say that they could be actually seen? Hey Marcus, if you had to pick one analog horror series to become a reality, which one would you choose and why? Love your content as always and hope you have an awesome day. That is a really good question. Um, hold on, I actually made a list recently of all the series I've went over because I'm going to make like a like a tier list soon because I've been asked to make a tier list like a thousand times. I think we'll do that as a stream one day. Uh, let me see. If I was to have one be real, I think about this, I think about the Mandela catalog only because the Mandela catalog is kind of just like only in Mandela right now, right? So as long as you're not in Mandela or the neighboring towns, you're kind of chilling, no? Oh, actually. Maybe Vintage 8's, uh... <laughs> is it selfish to say that I'd want the Tangy virus to be real because I just wouldn't have to deal with it? Like, realistically, the Tangy virus gets cured, and everything becomes peaceful after. Do other people die? Yes, but I'm in New York, so I would be fine. <laughs> it's either that, Vita Carnus is best. Are you kidding? The world is doomed in the world of Vita Carnus. It is to they're totally doomed. Local 58, it seems like the world is going to be doomed. Doors is way too creepy. I feel like that could happen to anybody. Liminal land is kind of exclusive to liminal land. Monument mythos, absolutely not. Children under the house involves dead children. That's really sad. Summation trials, maybe? Just because that's a very, like, specifically targeted thing. Midwest Angelica, definitely not. I believe it's only Mandela County that's affected in Mandela catalog. Correct me if I'm wrong. Vromia. See, a lot of analog horror series, they're, they're kind of just like specific towns or like specific people that are affected. So definitely one of those. But if I had to choose between like Vita Carnis, Midwest Angelica, or Local 58, I'd probably go... Midwest Angelica? Yeah, I think I'd go Midwest Angelica just because I feel like it'd be easiest to combat. I don't know, Vita Carnus has so many different species, I feel like the world is so screwed. Like, Mimics disguising themselves as humans, I that that's probably my biggest fear, would be being eaten by a Mimic in my own house. <laughs> And I'm still, based on some of the events that happens in Greylock later, I don't know if I want Greylock to be real. <laughs> Shh. 
to watch Baddington's FNAF stuff. I heard Bad Baddington's FNAF stuff is very, very good. I actually had a friend recommend it to me recently, so we will be checking that out. All right, let's let's continue this. As more time and energy is invested, as these are the ideal conditions from which thought forms are born, people may very well create their own ghosts and hauntings. However, as more time and energy is invested into the development of the thought form, they begin to harness more influence on their environment, until eventually exhibiting a semi-permanent physical appearance, and, in due course, becoming as tangible as a living creature. Mm. This is where Unit 13's interest until eventually exhibiting a semi-permanent physical appearance, and, in due course, becoming as tangible as a living creature. So with enough thought forming going on they can become physical creatures was that what i just heard actually true cobra that's a really good point um that might be the worst Greylock might be the worst, because really, if you just had one sick person <laughs> really just sit there and concentrate and make a thought form that was just really messed up, it would be GG. So, uh, for Winter 58, thank you for the super chat again. Uh, for Winter 50, uh, I mean, Winter 58, Winter of 83, I definitely want to check out Winter of 83. I did try watching it at one point. I heard that the beginning is very slow. Uh... But I heard that it gets way better as time goes on throughout that series, so I will be checking that out. That'll probably be like a movie watch I'll do. It'll be like one big video. This is where Unit 13's interest comes in. We've sought to answer a very important question. Can thought forms be created in a manner that would benefit American society and help keep American citizens safe? Unfortunately, the practice of intentionally creating a thought form by traditional methods would undoubtedly take years and years of devout mental training. So, Project Stargate has enlisted a world-renowned authority in thought forms, a man named Dr. Bernard Hayes, to oversee a number of the operations related to Unit 13's work. His participation has been invaluable and has brought fruitful results to the project. Due to Unit 13 and Simeodyne USA's combined efforts, bringing together some of the most prestigious minds in the world, specializing in the sciences of the human consciousness, with cutting-edge technology and engineering methods, we've created a groundbreaking, proprietary invention. Introducing the Thought Form Manifester. The Thought so it is important to hear that Unit 13 is headed by Dr. Bernard Hayes. I know for a fact we hear and see from Dr. Bernard several times in this series. Yeah, they say that, like, they say that their goal, right, is that they want to make thought forms to kind of, like, protect or help the American people. Do you really, though? Is that really the point of them? Or is that just what you're saying? A form manifester is able to create truly independent and self-sustaining thought form entities from the minds of select, willing participants. Being that they come from the deepest recesses of the human mind, thought forms can appear in virtually any configuration. They can look like a person, an object, an animal, or even something as abstract as the physical representation of an emotion. That being said, it's recommended to brace yourself before touring the thought form chambers, as thought forms can also take on appearances that could be considered disturbing, like a creature one might see in a childhood nightmare. I'd literally pass out and die. No, I would just die if I saw an actual spider this large. I, this looks large. Maybe it's a zoomed in photo, but I would I would die. <laughs> Who, who is out here imagining thought form spiders, please? There's no reason to be afraid, however. All thought forms are docile by nature, and while they may look or behave in a frightening manner, and though they are capable of making physical contact, they pose no threat to humans. Okay, notice how when it said they pose no threat to humans, the audio got a little glitchy there. I'm just saying... Sounds like they compose a threat to humans. Once your session in the thought form manifester is completed, your thought form will be securely transported directly into a containment chamber. Thought forms are unable to pass through the barrier of the 
factory that will not be capable of causing you any issues. Okay. Now it said that they can't get they can't breach the barrier of their like containment when they make thought forms. But again, the audio kind of glitches out, implying like that may not always be true. There are some very rare potential side Emma, thank you for becoming a member. Much appreciated. Session. These side effects include increased tiredness, loss of balance, dizziness, <laughs> insomnia, vomiting, episodes of temporary amnesia, and mild hallucinations. Okay. Um, I want to write these down because if characters start dealing with this, we can kind of determine that maybe it's because of them uh, trying to form thought forms. So. Let me just make sure these are side effects of trying to make one, right? Pass through the barrier of the and will not be capable of causing you any issues. There are some very rare potential side effects that may result from your session. These side effects include increased tiredness, loss of balance, dizziness, insomnia, vomiting, episodes of temporary amnesia, and mild hallucinations. Okay, so bad balance, dizzy. Vomit. Episodes of amnesia. Mild hallucinations. Hallucinations. These side effects, if present, will clear up within 72 hours of your session and are simply signs of your brain recalibrating to the real world. It is recommended that you refrain from driving or operating heavy machinery. Um, that's in Gemini Home Entertainment, Unknown Grave. For 72 hours after your session, even if you experience no side effects. None of these side effects should cause you any harm or overt stress. And former testing candidates who have experienced these side effects reported that they were very mild and merely a transient inconvenience. With all of that out of the way, we are looking forward to your participation with Unit 13, and your time in the platform manifester has been scheduled. However, there are several required mind exercises as a part of this video system that must be completed prior to your scheduled date in order to prime your consciousness and ensure the highest quality results. Please enter the video cassette labeled TF2, waking your subconscious now. This is the end of this tape. Sadly, we will not be seeing that one. Now, this video right here is one of my favorite um, analog horror videos just of all time. This is what hooked me onto this series, like, instantly. I still... Chat, do you think there's a person in this left window? Am I tripping? This kind of looks like a head, right? And then a neck, and then a body. Right? Like, there's definitely someone here because you could see them moving. But I don't know. It looks like there's someone right up against this window. Maybe it's just the way the video looks. Okay, no, come on. No, maybe not. No, maybe I'm bugging now. Yeah, I know there's definitely a person over here. For sure, I know there's a person here. I don't know why. That kind of looks like a person to me, man. No, maybe it's something else. Like, maybe it's just a lineup of... No, there's no way. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> That was really... Like, maybe it's a poster of a person? I don't know. I love this video so much.
Hey, Blaze, thank you for the super chat. That sounds like a s two sick ideas for a series. If you ever actually do it, please feel free to recommend it to me. I would definitely be willing to check it out. Yeah, so we got this person kind of like stalking the outside of someone's house and recording it. This is real sketchy. This is like my biggest fear is like someone breaking into my house. Uh, headphone warning as always. Yeah, so this person is trying to break into this house for whatever reason. Fun fact, I actually broke into someone's house to get this footage. Some people call it a felony. I call it commitment to the craft. Listen, I, I respect the grind, Rob. I respect the dedication. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, so... Not gonna lie, that was kinda loud, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I hit this person in here not hear that. Yeah, of, co of course he's kidding, chat. Yeah, so as you can see, he, he made it inside the house. But why though? Why and who is this? I actually don't remember that screaming. So yeah, they broke in. We can assume that they may have killed them. Then they walk outside and zoom in on the moon. I'd like to thank my producer, producer my writer, writer, writers, my director, director. My friends, and you, the ordinary PP people who made me what I am today. Next Headroom premieres at the Moonlighting tomorrow. They did love me. We interrupt, we interrupt our, our current program at the request of the Massachusetts State Police. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. All normal broadcasting has been discontinued during the emergency. This station will broadcast official information, news, and instruction for Northern Berkshire County, Massachusetts, after the following tone.
to 7 Mart. Each 7 Mart location is currently being used as a safe area and as police station for your protection. Remain in your secure area until the threat has been resolved. Police are currently unable to determine a physical description of any of the assailants involved in these attacks. It is strongly advised you do not open your home to anyone you do not intimately recognize. Do not attempt to search for or engage with any suspects. The suspects are considered armed and extremely dangerous. Do not leave your secure area necessary. This is for your safety. Law enforcement will be armed and patrolling your area. Interfering with this investigation can result in lethal force being inadvertently... I always love that transition. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Fun fact, all of this is 100% real. It's so good. <laughs> God, I can't get over that. That is so good. Watching that for the first time, that jump scare is crazy. I love this video so much because this situation is just horrifying. Like, imagine getting this emergency broadcast while you're at home and you're just being told, like, there is a group of people that are just breaking into people's houses. Like, dude, what? Like, that's ho that's terrifying. And then you can see like the perspective of somebody that's dealing with this situation. Like you can hear the broadcast in the background. So you know that they just heard this and they're looking out the window and they're about to close their window because of what they've just been told. And they're just too late. I know there's a few faces we're going to go through frame by frame. Also, Rob did say nothing is in the series for no reason. And I think that's what scares me the most about the series is that I feel like if I don't understand a certain detail, I'm like, damn, what does it mean? Or how does it connect? Yeah, so let's... So I'm not going to play the audio. Uh, but... So this hand pops up here. I remember when I first saw this, I thought this was like a monster hand. But this looks... This looks like a... Like, this looks like a person with a sweatshirt on or something, or a jacket and a glove. And then... Come on, come on. Definitely gets more clear. Yeah, so this is like, I believe this is the thumbnail right now, right? So, ah, this guy. Chat, this right here, this face becomes so frequent. And I don't know what it is, man. <laughs> but this face right here, this I, I believe this is the first appearance, unless somehow it appeared in one of the other videos and I missed it. But, so you get this face and then this one. One is like, yeah, it's like this skull, but it's not even just like a skull. Like it still looks like there's like flesh over it kind of. And then you get what looks like a mask here and it's cracked. Then you get this. Um, this looks like someone suffering real bad. And then no signal. And I think that's it. Yeah. Did I just skip two videos? No, I did. We're just on the next one. Oh, Matt, stop. Don't, no, don't do that. Tell me, tell me. Oh my God. Does it flash on one of the previous videos and I missed it already? No way I'm doing a bad job on the rewatch. <laughs> Was that person the woman that was screaming? I would like to I would like to guess that 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 was the person that, you know, whose house they just entered. I would like to think that that's who that is.
Please, I, I did reply to the earlier one. I said I said I thought it was uh it was a really good idea. And that if you actually go through with it, please, please recommend it to me. So I could check it out. Wanna get the most out of the series, you may need to research things mentioned slash featured in the series. I definitely I I could definitely see that. There definitely are like specific things that are mentioned. Oh, and there is a subreddit for Greylock. Okay, that's very helpful. We love a subreddit. The YouTube comments can only help me so much. I'll be I'll have to go check out the subreddit right after this. Hulk Force, thank you for the dollars super chat. Much, much appreciated. Well, I didn't even uh, Okay, so um I didn't even know there's a subreddit. Uh, we already have covered White Stag, unless they dropped a new video, but I believe we're fully caught up on White Stag videos. And yes, we did watch Monument Mythos. We streamed the entire series of Monument Mythos. You can check it out under the under the live tab on the channel. Alright, so here we go. Not here, not now, not anymore. I gotta start checking descriptions and stuff. Wow, this is a detail that I forgot. Do you know what they did up there? There are consequences. And then there's nothing in this one. Nothing in this one. Okay. Um, so, I probably, I believe I said this in my first reaction video. Do you know what they did up there? These are the consequences. And then the fact that in video four, we see the camera kind of zoom in on the moon at the end. And there is a few more things concerning the moon in later videos that definitely stand out a bit. Wow, I totally forgot about that detail. This is why I'm happy that I'm rewatching. Well, hello again, Tiffany. Oh, hi, Wanda. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. No dash this time. No, unfortunately, he couldn't get off work today. So I'm gonna have to call him on a payphone to let him know all the details as soon as we're done. <laughs> <laughs> He's excited to be a dad, huh? Oh. Yes, he uh, certainly is. We we both can't wait to be parents. Aw, and you said you've been together since high school, right? Yep. That is so sweet. And have you decided on a name for your baby boy yet? Yep, we're going with Max. Ooh, Max, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a nice, strong name. <laughs> That's why my fiancé wanted it so bad. He says it'll help make him strong right off the bat. That's a pretty good way of thinking about it. So let's see how strong little Max is so you can hurry up and make that call. Yes, please. He's been moving around like crazy the past couple weeks, so I think he's really strong. Strong enough to kick so hard I almost throw up sometimes, too. <laughs> Aw, what a wild boy! Activity is good. Yep. Okay, hopefully this isn't too cold. No, it's okay. <sighs> there he is. He's definitely a growing boy, that's for sure. And you're both looking really good. Oh, <laughs> I love hearing that. Let's get some measurements to see exactly, yeah. exactly how much he's grown. Oh, I'm already going back because uh, I don't want to miss it. There it is again. There it is again. There it is again. <laughs> this face haunts my nightmares. There it is again, dude. The same one from the last video where it looks like a mask that's cracked. And then bizarre events leave Berkshire Berkshires in terror. Authorities mute. Adams days. So it's kind of funny. I always notice that I struggle to read these things on video and then when I'm editing I can read it better. I think it's because of how close it is. Days after the unexplained I know I've read this before <laughs> so I know it's possible. Why can I not read it right now? It's, it's a single frame too.
Engage the emergency broadcasting system. <laughs> Rob, no way. Stop it. <laughs> Yeah, chat, can you read it? I feel like I've read this before. I don't even know if we. I. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna regret saying that. I was gonna say I don't even know if we really have to read the entire thing. But authorities were mute about the whole thing that went down in the last video. I did I read know. it the first time, right? I've never seen that before. Maybe something to do with the power. Oh. Okay. Um, this is a bit strange. What? What's strange? Nothing to worry about or anything. Just having some trouble finding the baby all of a sudden. Maybe the machine messed up? Possibly. But I can still see everything else. It's just Good idea. Not picking up the baby Good idea, Brooke. Reason. Has this ever happened before? Um, well, sometimes babies can move into certain positions that are hard to see. But... Listen, I'm not, I'm not a real expert on all this baby viewing and whatnot. But... What position is the baby gonna move in that it's completely not there? <laughs> yes, Rob, I'd love to know. If you could tell us. If not, I'm willing, I'm willing to screenshot it and, <laughs> and examine it word by word. I feel like I did read it before, did I not? Or did I also struggle to read it in my first video on this? Let me check, because I'm just curious. Okay, perfect. I knew I saw something. Bizarre events leave Berkshires and terror authorities mute. Oh my god, I can't read what it says. Okay, I can read a little bit. Looks like it says... Alright, I struggled here too. After the something unexpected events that left... No oh, okay, hold up. Rob is gonna DM me. You should watch Woodlands National Park. So fun fact, I actually, I have a recording of Woodlands National Park and I still haven't edited it yet. I wasn't sure how I felt about my video on it. But we'll see. I may release it. We'll see. We'll see. Fun fact, I, fun fact, I played the part of Max, the magical disappearing baby. Really? That's impressive. That must have been a hard roll. I thought Marcus's alternate appeared because <laughs> because I was reacting to myself here. Oh wait, no, this is, I thought I was looking at the reaction video again. Oh, well, what? We'll continue watching the rest of this one. But you can't see my baby at all. Oh, hold up, we got it. Uh, open image in a new tab. Thank you again, Rob. I appreciate it. Oh my God, this is so HD. Uh, tension creates a threat to the. Wellness of his wife as well, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday. 
Adams, days after the still unexplained events that left an unknown number of people dead and an entire county terrified, authorities seemed no closer to offering any kind of explanation, despite the fact that the Massachusetts State Police engaged the emergency broadcasting system over the events, neither they nor any local police departments are providing any clarity. While it's been impossible to ascertain exactly what occurred, a number of arrests have been made, with some witnesses claiming that the attacks were committed by people they never thought would be capable of such atrocities. I was in complete shock, said Theodore Kowalski, who happened to witness one of the suspects being taken into custody near his home on... According to staff working in the ultrasound department at Hayward Hospital in Adams, a number of pregnant women coming in for routine appointments, some in their second and third trimesters, discovered that their babies had inexplicably vanished from inside the womb, leaving the would-be mo mothers distraught as they discover they were no longer pregnant. Something truly horrible has happened here, said an ultrasound technician at Hayward Hospital who, is, who, who has asked to remain anonymous. We had several women affected by this. What's also strange is we've seen inundated, we've been inundated with calls from women asking for appointments who are suddenly showing signs of pregnancy, even though they shouldn't be. So, we got babies inexplainably vanishing and then inexplainably reappearing. <laughs> Wait. We're suddenly showing signs of pregnancy. That does change a lot. Thank you. Thank you again, Rob. That definitely, definitely, definitely helps a lot. Hmm. <laughs> Baby transfer. That is really interesting. I also think it's interesting that, that um, they say uh, they were the attacks were committed by people they never thought would be capable of such atrocities. I'm looking. Don't worry. He, he's definitely here. He ain't there. You know what? Why don't we just see if we can borrow another machine, okay? There has to be something wrong with this one. I'll be right back. Uh, Thank you, Totally Jackson. I appreciate your thoughts on that, on that series. I know you're not talking about Greylock. Thank you for coming through today. Jesus, that sound scared me. I forgot that that happened. Um, so hold on. We could. I know we could read this one better. I was better at reading this one. Um, so I say that. Am I gonna be stupid again? So this talks about how Tiffany was one of the was one of the people that unexpectedly um, lost her child. Rob, that is. That effort is incredible. Wow. The reason a lot of the visuals are low res is because with every single episode of Greylock, I record it onto a VHS tape with an old VCR and then loop it back to digital via capture card and CRT TV. That's insane. So you're watching a legit VHS tape with every episode. That's why they all look so damn good. <laughs> That's why they all fit that that analog horror perfectly. That's insane. That is really, 
that is really impressive. And Our Lady of Punk, thank you for the 20. This isn't much, but I hope this helps a lot. Listen, anything is anything is fine for me. I appreciate it so much, Our Lady of Punk. Seriously, thank you so, so much for the super chat. That is more than enough. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Take into consideration she died two years after this happened. Wait, how do you know that she died two years after? By the way, I'm going to have to go to, for a bathroom break really soon because I'm going to pee my pants. Does it say that here? Two years after. Do we get a year? I'm seeing May. I believe this is May 24th, but I'm not seeing a year here. Was there a year on the other one? No, I don't see a year on that one either. Keep track of the time that happened and you'll figure it out. Gotcha. Oh, hold on. Born on May 24th, 1958 and she's 29. So 87. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. So, all right. Wow, that takes a... Interesting. Okay, yeah, so we know Tiffany dies here. She was born in 58. It says born. Born in Windsor. 1958. Fun fact, Tiffany's obituary photo is my high school senior yearbook photo. Wow, Rob. You look really different. <laughs> Oh yeah, I see. March, March 31st. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and look at these even, even deeper, but okay. We'll keep that for now. Um, so here chat, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick and pee. And then when I come back, we're going to watch sleeping dogs, which is another really, really good video in the series. Uh, and then we're just in the last five and we'll be watching uh, tape 10, which is the newest one in the series. So I'm really excited. But uh, just let me go to the bathroom real quick and I will be right back. Just give me like two minutes or something.
All right, we back. Rob, why'd you tell them that, dude? Now they're gonna know my secrets. Chad, it's true. I don't actually pee when I say I'm going to pee. I'm just going back to building my igloo. All right, so here we go. Dr. Bernard Hayes, as we saw before, Dr. Bernard is the his headed. Uh, he heads Unit 13, which is in in charge of all the thought forms and whatnot. October 4th, 1991, New York City. I will be writing that down. Tape 6. Dr. Bernard chatting at the symposium. In NYC, October 4th, 1981. Okay. Humanity has stood tireless really loud. past through a great many trials of the intellectual forty to achieve but one singular goal. A goal that countless men have withered away and dying in pursuit of, leaving their towers of work behind to be climbed over by coming generations. High up higher they were said, so that we were at last reached the one called God. And there, on his apex of infinite knowledge and power, we will approach and look him in the eye. That's an equal. Again, dude, I said this when I first saw this. Dr. Bernard totally sounds like an evil villain saying that. That is some crazy stuff to say. Simeo Dine, let's go. Hold on, let me see that again. Welcome back. Oh, a little bit before. Welcome back. God damn it. I was reading chat. <laughs> Our Lady of Punk, thank you for the five again. Jungian psychology, oh god, this isn't gonna do a Soma, is it? Looping into Aeon. I actually have never played Soma. So I don't know anything about that sadly. That is one of those games I have to play. Uh, Simeodyne USA Enhanced Ops version 6.03 for the US Department of Defense. Welcome back, user. Frank Porter. Please enter your credentials. Credential requirement bypassed by system administrator. Greetings, but no user ID. Welcome to Simeodyne USA's virtual message assistant for user. Project Director, Frank Porter. Establishing custom telephone message settings. Sender, Paul Worley, of The Worley Construction and Mining Company. Dates of receipt ranging from March 24th, 1987 to March 30th, 1987. 
Okay, so this is uh, six years after what we just listened to Dr. Bernard say. This is in 87. Um, so, Paul Morelli. Construction of redacted facility. I believe this is the construction of the Unit 13 facility um, that it's revealed later. So, we'll check again. We'll see. This is our boy Paul, though. If you've watched this before, you know the atrocities are about to commence. This happened over a six day span. Beginning playback of your messages. Message one. March 24th, 11.14 a.m. Hey Frank, it's Paul Murray. We ran into somewhat of an issue today. We came across these tunnels inside the mountain. Pretty deep in, but uh... Well, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but... He told me to call if anything strange came up, and uh... I figured this qualifies. People have been here before. Some obviously man-made shit in there, like carvings and stone. This shit looks ancient, like real old. I took a crew in to look through it, but since part of the tunnels caved in some time ago, we're gonna just have to bust through it regardless. But I still wanted to make you aware of it. Anyways, I'll keep you moving. Thanks. Message two, March 25th, 7.38 a.m. Hey Frank, it's Paul. Just calling to tell you the day might be a bit slower than usual. Unfortunately, a number of the crew are sick as dogs. Not uh, not really sure what kind of stomach bugs going around or what, but we'll do our best to pick up slack. I'm calling in some guys who have a day off, so uh, hopefully things will get a little closer to normal, you know? That being said, I don't know how the hell this happened, but the section of the tunnel here I caved in is clear. The tunnel's been wired up with a few lights, too. Wanted to see if maybe you sent someone in while we were all shipped. My crew said you didn't, but, you know, I didn't see anybody else either, so... But a few of the guys said they'd seen something running around in the woods surrounding the site. I think it's probably a deer or whatever, but... Seeing all the ruckus we're making out here, you know? But they all insisted it was something else. Something like a... a real tall man. Might just be some environmentalist moron trying to cause some shit, but... Okay, so... They find these tunnels while doing construction. Um, they say that they're, you know, some of them are caved in. And then they come into work the next day. And the tunnels are cleared out. And there's even lights strung up throughout the tunnels. All happened overnight. They didn't see anybody go in. They have no idea how it was done. But they claim that they keep seeing, like, some thing around the area in the woods. Uh... We have seen the woods before in the second video to the mountain where something was definitely after the person that was in the car on the mountain. So definitely something to keep in mind. He said it resembled a tall man. Also, Our Lady, thank you for another five. I'm definitely going to mispronounce half of these words wrong here. Ions, I think, the second volume in a set of two that talks about the Antichrist, I think. Last super chat though, not made of money. Sorry. Listen, it's okay. I appreciate any and all super chats, Our Lady of Punk. Seriously, thank you so much. I will have to look into that though. If you actually, if you uh, have any more, any more information on that that I could look into, please put it in the Discord. Link to our Discord's in uh, the description down below. You never know. It could, it could connect. You never know. Nothing, so I told him to keep focus on the project. For sake to say, we're gonna avoid the tunnel until I hear back from you. All right, bye now. Message three, March twenty fifth, four fifty six p.m. Hey Frank, it's Paul again. The guy you sent out to take photos just left, but uh, well, he seemed totally fine when he got here, but we practically had to carry him back to his car when he was done. I don't know if he caught whatever's going around, but figured you should know. Also, we found some really old shit down there, Frank. Now, I ain't no historian, but we got a guy on the crew who used to do archaeology work or whatever, and I don't know. But I guess there's some old artifacts down there, like weapons and trinkets and whatever. I'll have him draft up a report for you and send it your way, because I feel like he'd be interested, and he can explain all this shit better than I could anyways. His name's Arnold Rivers. That's about it. All right. Bye. I'll report for you and send it your way, because I feel like... I don't know. 
But I guess there's some old artifacts down there, like weapons and trinkets and whatever. I'll have him draft up a report for you and send it your way, because I feel like he'd be interested and he can explain all this shit better than I could anyways. His name's Arnold Rivers. That's about it. Alright, bye. Arnold Rivers. Message 4. March 26th, 1.03 p.m. Frank, something ain't right here. Crew's getting worse, more sick. I, I feel okay so far, but I, I don't know how long that's gonna last. I saw that thing the guys have been talking about. Last night, stalking around in the tree line. I swear it had a face. A anyways, just, just call me back as soon as you can, Frank. Message 5. March 27th, 12.10 p.m. All our food is rotten. Don't even spoil them, covered in maggots. It was perfectly fine and stored. There wasn't any problems with the generator. Even if we lost power, I mean, it's the end of March. All our food looks like it's been left out in the heat for weeks. No idea what's going on. Please call me back. Message 6. March 27th. 4.02 p.m. It's Paul. We saw it again. Something's out here with us. It's in the wood. A lot of you were saying in the chat. Uh, I did I didn't notice this my first time reacting to it, but the comments had told me after. Um if you take a look at his face here, and then if we jump back to like the beginning, you see that his smile starts frowning as the video goes on and as things get worse, which is a very, very nice touch. I, I feel okay so far, but I, I don't know how long that's gonna last. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I skipped too far ahead. Frank, something ain't right here. Crew's getting worse, more sick. I, I feel okay so far, but I, I don't know how long that's gonna last. I saw that thing the guys have been talking about last night stalking around in the tree line. I swear it had a face. A a anyways, just, just call me back as soon as you can, Frank. Message 5. March 27th, 12.10 p.m. Was it 5.30? My bad. I was like, I don't know what we're at. I mean, it's the end of March. All our food looks like it's been left yeah. out in the heat for weeks. You heard this part. It's Paul. Okay, here we go. We saw it again. Something's out here with us. It's in the woods. And it's... It's watching us, goddammit. It ain't no animal either. Who are you guys gonna put up those fancy hunting cameras and see if we can catch anything? Maybe locals fucking with us? I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yeah. Anyways, I, I just... <laughs> Hunting Camp 3 motion detected. Message 7. Date and time unavailable. Message 7. Okay, there it is. So, um... Did I miss it already? I did. Yeah, so you could see, um, construction of... Unit 13 facility. Is there anything else here too? No, I think that was it. Date and time unavailable. Message. <laughs> now, VB, thank you for becoming a member. Much appreciated. And that's in Grimm, thank you for coming to remember as well. <laughs> Frank, it's Paul. Holy shit, uh, well, a lot of the crew here is sick now, and they're sort of like, and unresponsive. We tried emergency contacts for them, but they didn't know they just keep ringing. The phones, they just, they just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. Nobody picked up from any number we tried. Nobody picked up. No answer machines either. Made a call to the hospital and the same thing. Just ringing. Just tried 911. Still nothing. 
I figured the phones were fucked up, but the machine actually picked up. I love the laugh. I think I caught whatever's going around. My skin, it feels, feels tight. A lot of pressure behind my eyes. My, my teeth feel like they're, they're humming, vibrating. You know what? First I'll start when we came across that tunnel. I feel like it... I need to figure out what's down there. I think whatever's down there could help my crew. But most of all, I feel like something really bad's gonna happen if I don't go down. So I'll be going down tonight. It's so weird that effect. Message. Like it's almost like it's invisible. Oh, I'm trying to go back. Like it was over the camera the entire time or something and you couldn't even tell. I I do actually know that Mount Greylock is an actual mountain in Massachusetts. I found that out um a few months ago and it was kind of funny because the other day my parents are like looking at uh, staying at some place for the weekend near Mount Greylock and I was like, you know, what's really funny. <laughs> I actually know about that place, guys. <laughs> You shouldn't go there. There's some sketchy stuff going on around there. I just thought it was a pretty funny coincidence. Message. Yeah, thought forms thought forms can be invisible, yeah. Message nine. March 30th. Time unavailable. Um, does anything flash there? No. I don't think so. There's one more hunting camera. Right? And then it says, what time is that? Oh, you can't even see the time on the top left. Time code error. And would you look who it is? Would you look who it is? It's our boy with the cracked mask. Authorities continue. So they go into this mountain, they're doing construction, uh, trying to build the Unit 13 facility. They discover these tunnels. Once they discover the tunnels, everything starts going downhill. Um, they start getting sick. They start uh, dealing with all of these um, symptoms. Uh, their food starts rotting like instantly, even though they're taking care of their food. Just a lot of a lot of bad things. They start seeing that thing in the forest, which we can assume I'm going to guess is like the mast. This masked uh, man here. Uh, I am convinced that that thing is a thought form. 
because uh, it just so happens to always be around when all these weird sketchy things are happening um and they do paul brings up arnold rivers and how arnold rivers knows that a lot of the things that are deep in that tunnel are extremely old and i believe arnold rivers is not in this video in the next video i could be wrong but i believe that's arnold rivers that talks in the next video so we'll hear more about that situation in a second uh but let's watch this one tape seven back to normal to investigate the recent crime wave that swept across northern berkshire county left many of its residents in a state of anxiety and panic it was two weeks ago when the emergency broadcast system was engaged to warn residents to secure their homes due to the activity of a group of individuals who had been targeting and breaking into people's homes authorities have since confirmed that the attacks were in fact part of an organized criminal effort and have been attributed to a local anti-american militia group operating out of western massachusetts called police have made numerous arrests in connection to militia and officials continue to release statements to assure the public that they are safe once again we've seen a lot of credible information over the past couple of weeks there you go it says mount Greylock in the background right there Thankfully, due to the continued. Also, isn't this so odd? How it's News 13 and their symbol is like an eye in a triangle. The efforts of law enforcement, life has been able to return back to normal. Back, back to normal. To turn back to normal. To normal. To normal. To normal. Clearly not very normal. Again, remember, we just had a few videos ago, all these things about the babies and uh, uh, babies being transferred, what it's what it seemed like. Uh, some mothers were, their children were disappearing and some of them were becoming pregnant even though they shouldn't have been getting pregnant. Wait, what did Rob say? Did I miss it? Makes you wonder how long it was standing there. It's the little... It's the little things. Back to normal for residents of Berkshire County. Liar. So it's very clear that uh, he's lying about the things that he's saying here. By the way, incredible transition into video eight. <laughs> Literally seven right into eight. That's so, so perfect. Experiencing technical difficulties, well, please stand by. Went completely tits up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our asshole CIA liaison for the past two hours. What the fuck happened? We're looking into it, sir, but we experienced new issues with the broadcast on our end, so our engineers believe that the signal was hijacked before we were reaching the transmitter, but once we started receiving phone calls from viewers, we switched to a backup transmitter. But by then, the hijacker had already said everything they wanted to say, hadn't they? Yes, sir. What a complete fuck up. They made us look like a fucking joke. And sure, our most popular show. Speaking of which, Don, where the fuck is he? I oh, dude. And he needs Good call. I wonder if that is a if that is a connection. Hold on. The fact that it's News 13, Unit 13. I didn't even catch that. I <laughs> I said 13 because it's an unlucky number. I'm such a dope. Didn't even catch the... Uh, then it might be Unit 13 kind of running that news channel. Good call, Zodiac. Good call. Uh, so yeah, they're talking about how the news channel kind of got hijacked a little bit. Um, which I guess... Uh, we know thought forms can kind of... Almost seems like they can mess with anything. They can mess with lights and whatnot, so I wouldn't kind of put it off if they messed with, um, 
if they mess with uh, a news channel somehow. Nope, no captions, only auto-generated. I'd rather not even use auto-generated captions just because I think it's... Uh, sometimes YouTube gets it really wrong. Oh, you think Don writes a liar? Show me one single thing that indicates that. <laughs> I think he's lying about how um, it's an anti... What'd they say it was? An anti-America militia group that did that... Um, that did that attack? I don't know about all that. Things are going back to normal? I don't know about all that. Life has been very chaotic and stressful recently for me, but these streams keep me sane. Thank you for everything, broski. I appreciate you, Brooke. I appreciate your, uh, you always being in the streams and whatnot and always being active in the Discord. It really, it really does mean a lot to me. And thank you, thank you so much for the super chat and just being here in general. But by then, the hijacker had already said everything they wanted to say, hadn't they? Yes, sir. What a complete fuck up. They made us look like a fucking joke. I'm sure our most popular show. Speaking of which, Don, where the fuck is he? I can't get hold of him, and he needs to get in here and read a statement to help clean up this fucking mess. Uh, well, we've been trying to reach him. We've called him multiple times. We've tried his patience. We've asked around to see if anyone's heard from him, but nothing. Right now we've got Gerald standing in for him tonight. If Don doesn't show. <sighs> You've been to his house? No way, dude. Alright, Rob said find the date the Greylock channel was created and add up each individual digit. Ah, dude, that's really good. Three plus two is five plus two is seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then if you include the one for January, that's 13. That's pretty fire. The amount of detail is just is just insane. And it's nuts to me. Well, no, I just thought that maybe you'd, you'd be upset if I did that. So. Get in your fucking car and go to his fucking house. I don't care if you kick down his front door and drag him here by his ear. You bring him into the studio. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Rosenbaum. Of course, I'll do that right now. There's some real powerful people depending on us right now. They need us to manage the response to these events. To let the public know what's going on, and the last thing we need is it going wider than it already fucking has. So do what you need to do, or I'm gonna replace you with some producers who actually know how to produce a fucking show. Sorry, the file. Alan is a douche. Um, so someone said uh, oh, that they thought I missed the newspaper clipping at the end here. Did I? No, oh, no, damn it. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, oh, that's right. I did. There is one here, right? Is it around the baby section? I feel like I do. I do remember seeing one. I remember I went over it too, right? God, why can't... How did I miss that? Did I just see it? Because I gotta have my focus right now because I'm trying to pay attention to chat and watch the video at the same time. Was it right at the end? Oh no. Did I crash? Okay, I didn't crash. At the very end. Okay, no, 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 too far, too far, too far. 
No beginning, I think. Where he turns into a skeleton. All right, so yeah, you guys are saying it's like right here. On frame by frame here. No, did what? After the baby, I did. Did I not just scroll through after the baby? Why am I struggling right now? All right, dude, hold on. Oh my God, I just let it, I just let it play and saw it. Hold on, come on. Yeah, that's right, I forgot this is crucial information too. Uh, so photo caption, engaged couple Alex Marsh 28 left and Tiffany Crisaldi 26 right sit together as they discuss the baffling loss of their unborn son. So good call, uh, I forget exactly who said it in chat earlier. They said that they they actually lost the baby um, years before she died, so she dies at 29. They lose the baby at 26. So that's important to know. To note. Uh, let me just. Huh. And this is why I did this chat. This is why we did this. Um, so check this out. I knew I'd seen that name before. Um, Alexander Marsh. Alexander Marsh. The thought forms video was intended for him because he's a part of unit 13. That is something I definitely did not catch on the first watch. Huh. That is obviously incredibly important. <laughs> um, I don't even know what to assume with that. Fun fact, Tiffany actually died trying to do a backflip into a kick flip into a kick flip McTwist. Thank you. This is why we this is why you're here, Rob. You gotta give us the behind the scenes details that we don't know. Thank you. I, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> That is, dude, that is insane. I did not at all uh, catch that. And then uh, this, I believe, is... These events are only the tip of the iceberg, says Jim Melgren. Our boy Jim Melgren. Another name we want to write down. Uh, a former police officer who now works as a private investigator and hosts a radio show centered around government transparency and accountability. There are horrifying reports of people healthily grown adults becoming deformed, growing extra limbs, teeth growing out of their scalp, people developing severe mental conditions or even sickness doctors have never seen. So this clearly shows that despite... Um, Unit 13 and the news and whatever trying to shut down the public and make it seem like nothing's really wrong and everything's fine Our boy Jim Melgren here knows something's wrong and is trying to still bring it to light uh, with his radio show It's definitely important Let 
Wait, imagine if he used his unborn baby as a test subject and the mask thing is the thought form because the mask looks like a baby face. I mean, honestly, you never know at this point. Wow, thank god we went back for that, dude. To believe I almost totally missed that section. Alright, here we go. Old ends. Old odd ends, my bad. And uh, we listened to the beginning of this section, so we'll go to here. To a fucking show. Sorry, the file you are trying to access has been destroyed and can no longer be executed or retrieved. Please choose another file. Warning, anomalous file detected. This file should not exist. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Yes. Opening file. Arnold Rivers personal log. Final. My name is Arnold Eugene Rivers. Yeah, so we got Arnold Rivers here. Um, like I said before, Paul Morelli mentions Arnold and says, like, you know, Arnold knows. Um, he used to be an archaeologist, so he knows a lot about this stuff. So uh, he offered him if he wanted to contact him to get more information. So. The date is April 8th, 1987, about a quarter past nine at night. I was involved in the Morelli construction project at Mount Greylock. I was hired due to my background in anthropology and archaeology. I've worked to excavate a number of different historical sites. Paul Morelli took me on after securing a government contract for the Greylock project. I'm recording this because I believe my life is in danger, and I likely don't have a lot of time left, so I need to leave some kind of record of my findings. On March 24th, our crew came across tunnels in the mountain that held a multitude of ancient markings and artifacts. On March 25th, Paul cleared the interior of the mountain and asked me, accompanied by a small crew, to look through the tunnels and record notes on what I was able to recognize. I was then to report to one of the project directors, named Frank Porter, to offer my perspective on our findings. I kept this to myself at the time, but what we discovered in that mountain was not normal. Not only did I see the impact it was having on the crew, but certain aspects of my findings did not make any sense. Many of the artifacts were pre-colonial. Some were from Native American tribes, but there were other artifacts. Some were so American, and others were shockingly Clovis in nature. Finding Clovis artifacts here means that people have been coming to Mount Greylock since at least 11,000 BCE. But that's not all, no. There are artifacts I found that could potentially be from even earlier Paleo-American cultures that we have yet to even begin studying. Then there were artifacts and writings left by the cultures that were pre-Columbian in nature. Transoceanic contacts prior to Columbus reaching the Americas has always been largely a theory, but, but the artifacts in this mountain, they, they prove it. Ancient Chinese, Arabic, Indian, Roman, Spanish, Viking, even ancient Greek and Egyptian are finding that they alone would change world history as we know it today. I'll admit, the anthropologist in me was thrilled. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I figured it had to be a hoax, but I'm confident that it's all authentic. But my excitement was soon replaced with a looming fear and anxiety. How could such a place be so important to so many cultures for so long? There must be something immense here. Whatever it was, well, that's why I left the project. The tunnels all connected to a series of chambers deep into the interior of the mountain. That's where a majority of the relics were found. There were old baskets of herbs and spices, pottery, weapons and armor, towns. Yeah, that's one thing I, um, I absolutely, like, I was saying this to my mods earlier today. I was like, Greylock is a series that I have never heard one of the actors say something and been like, and eh, that was bad voice acting. Like, never, ever have I doubted it or thought, like, any of it was, like, corny or anything. It sounds like someone in chat just said, it sounds like this guy really went through all this. 
like the voice acting is just so top notch it's incredible and that goes for everybody too and you never you never double think it it's just, it's so natural and fits in so well yep can practically fear the fear and anxiety 10 out of 10 give themselves nightmares again <laughs> thank you again our lady of punk for the five much much appreciated thank you again um yeah i love uh another thing too about this series is the world building and just the constant information to keep you updated with the story there's never an episode that you just watch and there's no information like even the last video was two minutes long not even a minute 30 and you get that information um you know about alex and about jim melgren which is like obviously important to the series um i just want to pause to talk about here that this discovery is insane of course uh that they discover that inside these tunnels are things from cultures from all across the planet and we know that that is just insane for something like that to be a thing especially all those thousands of years ago so this is definitely something very serious and something that's been around for a super, super long time. And for whatever reason, they wanted to go down there and kind of reawaken the beast of whatever this is. Talismans, other religious items, countless other things, but all of it was there purposely as offerings. <laughs> It was billions of years ago, when our planet was still mostly fire and rock, that a Mars-sized planet that had been drifting through our solar system collided directly with the Earth. The impact was so powerful and violent that the rogue planet was blown into countless pieces of debris. This debris collected to form our moon. Many of the pieces of the unknown planet remain inside the Earth to this day. So there we go. I think that connects again with um with uh the the things about the moon. Uh you know, we got to see at the end of video 4 or was that video 3? No, that was video 4 where they break into the house. Um that person zooms in on the moon at the end. Um again the do you know what they did up there? And then now we find out that um some rogue planet collided with Earth broke into a bunch of pieces the remains ended up being the moon but some of the pieces may have remained on earth i'd like to think that that is what is in uh mount Greylock. that's that's what's deep in these tunnels is whatever came from the moon uh whatever those remains were that are left in the earth that's my that's my little theory right there Police Department, Dispatcher Carey speaking. Um, yes, I'm calling to report a break-in at my co-worker's house. What is your name, sir? My name is Liam Hollander. Okay, Liam, you said this was your co-worker's house. What is your co-worker's address? Uh, it's, uh, Parker, Parker Hill Road in Adams, uh, number 491. 491 Parker Hill Road, is that right? Yes. Okay, can you tell me, is anybody hurt? Liam, are you still with me? Yes, sorry. Is anybody hurt? Yes. Yeah, so someone pointed this out before that Don looks, this is Don here, dead. And he looks exactly like how he did on uh, the news broadcast when his face gets distorted. But why? So if Unit 13 was controlling the thought forms, right? And if Unit 13 is behind the news, why would they kill Don? I feel like that doesn't make sense. And I do believe it was a thought form or something that killed him related to that because that does not look like a, a necessarily a normal death. I could be overthinking here. It's totally possible. But I don't see why he would be killed. Like, yeah, he is lying. Things really aren't okay. He's They're kind of covering stuff up. But... You think he was shot?
I don't know, would a gunshot do that? It does look like it, it could have came in this way. But no, they said he was attacked. Wait, hold on. Let's hear, let's hear that whole thing again. Park, dispatcher Carrie speaking. Um, yes, I'm calling to report a break-in at my co-worker's house. What is your name, sir? My name is Liam Hollander. Okay, Liam, you said this was your co-worker's house? Yeah, it'd be worse. What is your co-worker's address? Uh, it's, uh, Parker, Parker Hill Road in Adams. Uh, number 491. 491 Parker Hill Road, is that right? Yes. Okay, can you tell me, is anybody hurt? Liam, are you still with me? Yes, sorry. Is anybody hurt? Yes. Then I witnessed many altars constructed out of the mountain stone. Along with evidence of mass animal and human sacrifice. And the carvings in the walls of these sacrificial chambers, I couldn't recognize a single familiar symbol. And it, it made me sick to even look at them. Let me be clear. I am not, nor have I ever been, a religious man. But there's something in that mountain. Something people of countless cultures over the history of our planet have been worshipping, but I don't know why. But I could feel it. Whatever's down there, I could feel it. It was like being trapped in a fever dream. I swear I could hear a voice and even felt compelled to go further, to speak to whatever's down there. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I haven't been right since I, I keep hearing this droning in my head, ceaseless all day and night. I, I can't sleep, just droning, always droning. But, but that, that doesn't matter right now. I informed Mr. Porter in my report that the archaeological findings in the mountain are of monumental historical importance, and that there is certainly more to be discovered. And I recommended discontinuing construction there. But it's not as though I have any authority over this project. I fully expected to be ignored. Mr. Paul called me on the evening of March 28th, and we spoke on the phone briefly. It was as I thought. He disregarded my concerns. I informed him that I wasn't going to return to the site. He insisted I did, said I was a valuable asset to the project, even offered me a substantial raise, and wanted me to lead a specifically organized team that would clear the tunnels of artifacts before excavation would continue. I, quote unquote, could be responsible for the biggest historical finding of all time, he said. I refuse again. I won't put a price on my sanity or my health, especially after seeing what was happening to the crew. Now loading. Morally Greylock event. Group C. Survivor data. Profile for patient B3590. Rockford, Thomas. Al formations. Notes. Communicative. Patient prone to spontaneous violent outbursts. Treatment of heavy sedation recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Now loading. Profile for patient. B9231. Washington, Samuel. Al formations. Notes. Communicative. Patient suffers from constant state of severe paranoia and delusions, resulting in unpredictable violent outbursts. Standard treatment ineffective. High dose xylazine is recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Now loading. Profile for patient. B6670. Herrera, Ramon. Al formations. Notes. Uncommunicative. Patient appears to be in catatonic state. Warning, patient may sit up very suddenly, without provocation, to project a vomit at any staff in area. Gross. Patient's vomit is extremely corrosive and emits nerve gas. All treatments ineffective. Insane. Studies must be conducted with full anti-corrosive gear and air purifying respirator equipped on all staff involved. Now loading. Profile for patient. B8816. Fleming, Charles. 
All formations. Notes. Uncommunicative. Warning. Patient will attack on site. Do not interact. Immunity to pain. Patient exhibits cannibalistic tendencies. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B4041. Oakhurst, Scott. Now formations. Notes. Communicative. Communicate with caution. Warning, patient actively pretends to be benevolent and friendly. Strong homicidal and cannibalistic tendencies. Killed and partially consumed six staff members on April 6th, 87. Patient. Insane. The fact that it's like they've been turned into these monsters and yet they're still smart enough to try to deceive people into eating and killing them is pretty crazy. And this is April 2nd. The last time we heard about from them, like the last time we heard from Paul was March 30th. Hysterically during the attack. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia or permanent restraint for further study recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B7992. Kowalski, Edward. Now formations. Notes. Communicative. Hazardous. Warning, patient possesses inhuman power of suggestion and influence over others. Do not interact. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B1584. Rafferty, John. Now formations. Notes. Uncommunicative. Hazardous. Patient appears to be deceased. No vital signs. Patient's body not decomposing. Warning, staff have become ill after even brief time spent in patient's room. Illness disregards protective suiting. Immediate quarantine required for all victims. Mortality rate post-exposure currently 92%. Survivors subject to rapid physical and mental malformations. All treatments ineffective. Immediate remote euthanasia recommended. I consider myself incredibly like we and we didn't see we didn't see Paul right in any of those. I don't think we did. Um, jaded. How the patients look is different variations of how I feel when my work alarm goes off in the morning. Lol. Oh, uh, I love you. I love your and I love you and these streams. Thank you so much, jaded. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the five dollars super chat i totally agree i feel the same way about the alarm in the morning it is always terrible and has me looking like that when i get out of bed not being in that condition uh i know we kind of like saw paul at the end of uh at the end of the sleeping dogs video like how his face gets deformed but i would like to know like what his details are of how he acts and whatnot this right now Oddly, he quickly accepted my second refusal, wished me luck in my future endeavors, but before I could say anything else, he'd hung up. But it seemed I'd made the right choice. I heard something awful happened up at Mount Greylock, and then simultaneously, there were all of these things that have been happening around the mountain. The home invasions, the dead bodies that fell from the sky over Cheshire. I hope to God we see a video of that because that would probably look insane. Let me just run that back in case you didn't hear it. And then simultaneously, there are all of these things that have been happening around the mountain. The home invasions. The home invasions that we did see. The dead bodies that fell from the sky over Cheshire. The dead bodies that fell from the sky. And yet the news had the balls to be like, everything's going back to normal, guys. The pregnancy phenomena, so many other unexplainable things, they all must be related. And I've been trying to figure out how. I've connected with a local investigator who's been trying to get to the bottom of this. I've shared with him everything I have, 
Though I feel that I've been being watched. I feel a looming threat that I can't really explain. Would the government really send someone to kill me over this? I feel like I'm paranoid. Like I've lost some of my mind. But I came home from the grocery store the other day and my front door was unlocked. And I know I had locked it before I left. He says that he spoke that he spoke to Frank Porter and like Frank kept being like, you know, you could you could be the one that says that they discovered all this, blah blah blah. And Arnold, after kind of hearing about how sick the people got in the mountain, was like, yeah, no, I'm definitely good. I'm good. And on the second time of his refusal, Frank was kind of like, all right, bet. And hung up the phone. Definitely immediately after was like, all right, Arnold's got to die. Arnold already knows too much. He's got to go. So Arnold was pretty smart here in telling an investigator all this information so that in case he does die, that at least the information will get uh, still gets out. You know what I mean? It just doesn't die with him, which is really good. Also, Our Lady of Punk, Paul's still in the mountain, but I get the distinct impression it won't be the last time we see of him. Okay, leaving before I spend any more money. Love y'all. We love you too, Our Lady of Punk. Thank you again for another five. I also do, uh, I do agree. The fact that we didn't see him in the reports here, I do feel like uh, we may end up seeing him again in some form in the future. Could be wrong, but I would like to, I'd like to think that we'll somehow see him. I scanned my entire house for traces of anything, but found nothing out of the ordinary. I even checked and replaced all of the light bulbs. Oh, God. Saying it out loud like this, it makes me realize how crazy I sound. I've always been a rational man. There's a logical explanation behind everything. I don't think so. Bro's trying well, to talk himself out of it. I'm glad that I put all of this into a recording. Perhaps that was what I needed to snap me out of this. Honestly, I feel much better just talking about it. <gasps> this can't be. Oh my god. That's my face with door. No, 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 no. Dakota. Oh, what is it again? Oh, I never caught that. It comes out of his basement door. Hamza, stop it. Stop being weird. They're here. I'm inside my bedroom closet. I'm going to keep the tape recorder running, and I'm hiding in here with my files. If something happens to me, and you find any tapes or files somehow, please bring it to the investigator, Jim Melgren of North Adams. That goes for this video footage as well. Come on out, it's the police. <laughs> I agree. I think things that mimic voices are like the creepiest thing possible because there's something so disturbing about luring people that way. Um, you'll notice that it sounds like a lot of the um, a lot of the things it says 
are kind of things I feel like that the monster has heard before. Like, obviously, the kid being like, ha, 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 it's a monster. And then, like, the screaming, no, no, no. And you know what I mean? Like, it's all things that I feel like that monster's heard before. And that's why it mimics them so well. Even the police radio and, like, oh, police come on out. I feel like it's definitely heard before. <laughs> And of course, um, as we see, it is in fact, first of all, is it just me or its head is huge? Or maybe it's just the angle that we're seeing from. But it obviously is the same thing that we've been seeing throughout the whole series. So now, given that this thing came after Arnold, I'd like to say that Unit 13 sent this thing to go get him, you know what I mean? To take him, to take him out. Yeah, Masked Man is definitely the military's goon. I agree. This thing belongs to Unit 13 and does its, does its dirty work. That's why, if it was, if this is the same thing, it is the same thing that was in the forest around Mount Greylock when they were doing, um... Like when they were doing the construction there when Paul Morelli was there. It makes sense why it didn't kill them. It was kind of just watching and I guess doing other things around the area. And and not actually uh, interacting with them specifically. And yeah, bro's forehead is almost as big as mine. Uh, but here we go. We'll jump into the next one. So this is Trojan Technology. This is the last one I watched. And then the one after this is uh, all new to me. So I'm excited. Here we go. Let's just jump in. Accessing GBS properties. 101. WRAV. FM. Radio station. Date of broadcast. December 13, 1963. Segment. Announcement of the National Access Initiative. Beginning playback. In one of his first acts after his historic succession, President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration... Oh, here you go. This is another... Um... It's the triangle logo again has announced an upcoming program that will revolutionize communication and bring critical home electronics into every American household. The National Access Initiative, as it's been named, is a program designed to ensure that all citizens have equal access to vital communication tools and ways to stay informed, fostering connectivity, security, and unity across the nation. Under this groundbreaking initiative, Eligible American households will receive packages containing a myriad of electronics so that citizens may stay properly engaged with one another and remain knowledgeable regarding important events. The electronics such as telephones, televisions, and radios. These packages will also include items aimed at keeping families safe with devices such as smoke alarms, burglar alarms, and even flashlights. These things will empower individuals to not only stay involved in their communities, but to remain prepared for any emergency as well. President Johnson himself was quoted as saying that in this era of progress and innovation, it is crucial for every American to have the tools necessary as they navigate the challenges of modern life in an era of ever-increasing technological dependence. These electronics packages are being made available to American households through a partnership with world-renowned technology manufacturer, Simeodyne USA to American households. Uh, hold on, chat. Wait, give me one second real quick. I'm sorry.
Sorry about the chat, my bad. Okay, let's go back real quick. So we saw a few little news articles. Damn, how far back was it? For every American to have the tools necessary as they navigate the challenges of modern life in an era of ever increasing technological dependence. These electronics packages are being- Did I skip it already? My crazy chat? Regarding important events, electronics such as telephones, televisions, and radios. These packages will also include items aimed at keeping families safe with devices such as smoke alarms, burglar alarms, and even flashlights. These things will empower individuals to not only stay involved in their communities, but to remain prepared for any emergency as well. President Johnson himself was quoted as saying that in this era of progress and innovation, it is crucial for every American to have the tools necessary as they navigate the challenges of modern life in an era of ever-increasing technological dependence. These electronics packages are being made available to American households through a partnership with world-renowned technology manufacturer, Simeodyne USA. Oh my god, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, there we go. So President Kennedy says no to Simeodyne USA. Kennedy was like, nah, I'm not about it. And then assassin kills Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson sworn in. And we know that Lyndon Johnson kind of agreed and was like, all right, we'll do the Simeodyne thing. It's a little, uh, it's a little coincidental, don't we think? That, uh, Kennedy's like, no, we're not doing the Simeodyne thing. And then, uh, he dies and Lyndon B. Johnson gets sworn in. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> It's a little odd. And then uh, we get some of the footage. We see that Simi Dine is, you know, doing some the spying on the, giant's expertise on the Americans. Creating cutting edge revolutionary technologies over the past decades has made them a household name. And their gracious contribution to this initiative ensures that the devices provided will be of the highest quality. Yeah, so this is going back to 1966. further enhancing the experience and benefits for American citizens. When asked for a quote during a press conference earlier this week, President of Simeodyne USA, Percival C. Rothwell, had a lot to say. The National Access Initiative represents a milestone in our nation's journey towards progress and inclusivity. It's a reflection of the American government and Simeodyne USA's unwavering commitment to empower every American citizen, regardless of age, location, or income, with the tools and resources needed to thrive in the electronic age. Wait, did hold on. location or income, with the tools and resources needed to thrive in the electronic age? Nineteen sixty six and better cams than modern bank cams. Thank you again, Blaze, for the super chat. Much appreciated. And do you want to say thank you for the super chat as well? American households still don't have a television in the house. This means they are less informed and are unable to respond to emergencies as quickly or efficiently. A much greater percentage of households have no smoke alarms to alert them in the event of a fire. Perhaps most shocking of all, 29% of Americans don't even have a telephone in their home, meaning they're unable to call for aid or even just contact friends or family members. They are left disconnected.
for decades. People of all kinds of one. It's so funny that they're using this excuse like Americans don't have telephones and they don't have smoke alarms and all this, so that's why we're giving it to them. Meanwhile, they have their own like you know, personal reasons for wanting to do all this. They're just needing an excuse to give people all these things. Hashtag bring back Marcus. What do you mean? I'm right here. Thank you for the $2 super chat. What it is we're working on at any given time inside Sylviadai. And for decades, we've kept it all quite secret. But I'll let you in on a little something. I'm here. Kennedy didn't go for it. But you assured me he was amenable. Or was that just more of your bullshit? Huh? He's gonna fucking expose our whole plan for the NAI program. The meeting couldn't have gone worse. If that fucking nick thinks he's gonna expose Simeon, he's got another thing coming. But we're not the only ones he's pissed off lately. After rejecting Operation Northwoods, and then that executive order involving the Federal Reserve, there are a lot of snakes in the grass. And it's about time that Kennedy got bit. At Simeon, USA, just more to show the future. I don't think and it was a coincidence. The great, great grandson of our company's founder and its current president, I'll tell you one irrefutable fact, the most important one. All roads lead to connectivity. Without connectivity, we have no future. The more isolated individuals are from one another, the weaker they are. The more easily defeated they are. And the less likely they are to see the value of their own lives. Hey, hon, have you seen the car keys? Humanity has stood many times at the precipice of extinction. And the only reason we are still here today is because we stood there together. Simeon <laughs> USA is. Rewind. Check it, chat. What does this mean? Uh, this obviously isn't the same mask as the one that we've been seeing. It's a different one. And it kind of looks like this person also has like a red cloak on with it. Which is very odd. But we'll keep watching because I think this will tie in with uh, something else that's about to that we're about to see. Simeon USA is here with you every step of the way. The NRA program was a trap. They're watching. They're listening. Fuck LBJ. Fuck Simeodyne. I won't be your lab rat anymore. That's in October of 1990. Um, which that's three years after the whole Paul Morelli thing. So I think right now this is the most recent, um, piece of video that we have. make a promise to continue to support you into the future as well. Whether it's from a lack of infrastructure or a lack of income. No Alex Marsh, maybe. Should be restricted access to potentially life-saving and life-enhancing technology. And this, this is only the beginning. We have so much more planned so that Americans can all truly be equal in our society. Security. Connectivity, accessibility. It is our belief that it is these three factors that make America the best country in the world. Yeah! 
I probably pointed this out when I first reacted to it, but that's my birthday, 1993. So never mind. This is the most recent. Okay, I thought there might be something there. So, uh, we get this like weird image. This looks uh, this looks like what we just saw when I paused before with the mask, and then there's like a like a cloak on around it. But in the end, it only mattered a little bit. Judas, thank you for becoming a member. Much, much appreciated. Welcome to the gang. Thank you, thank you. But, um, yeah, I, I don't... I don't know what this means yet. This definitely looks like a cult. Um, I'm not sure what side they're on or what their goal is could they all be thought forms could this be connected to the guy that has the cracked mask who knows my best theory is that the ceo of simiodine planted those camps to spy on people and if they get suspicious of him he sends strong physical thought forms after them to kill them like the last video it's definitely possible or i i think it's definitely to monitor them for something either if people know too much information or just for any reason that they might need to monitor people. For all we know, that's that may be how they found out about, you know, Arnold and his recordings or whatnot. Maybe they were monitoring him through smoke detectors and all those things. You really, you really never know. But thank you again uh, for that super chat. Sefi, thank you for the $50 super chat. Happy stream day. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, Sefi, I am having a good day. Thank you so much. Welcome into the stream. <laughs> Thank you for that insane, insane super chat. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sefi. Always appreciate your support on these streams. Uh, and do you want to sit? Thank you for the $2 super chat. All of these, all this to summon some imaginary rejects. I wouldn't call them imaginary rejects. I mean, they, they seem to go on a killing spree if they really want to. Uh, what year did Arnold die? Uh, 87. I believe it was at, it was at some point in 87. Because he talks about, like, he refers to the Paul Morelli situation as, like, oh, in March when this happened. So I believe that was in 87. Will we see tape 10? Yes. We're going to watch tape 10 right after we finish this one. And that will be my first reaction. Mr. Rothwell also stated that these monumental benefits won't only be made available to American households, but to police and fire departments, schools, and to small businesses as well. So everywhere. The Johnson administration has stated that while they are going to begin launching this landmark program right away, it will first be made available only in select areas as construction crews from coast to coast prepare to establish important infrastructure that will support the National Access Initiative program. Hold on. Did I miss anything there? Always got to double check. Oh my god, this is 1994. Dude, I didn't even realize that. Alright, so this is the most recent video that we have. 3, 3.09 a.m. Katie. You must have begun. 
Yeah, headphone warning, you guys. Probably just don't remember. Are you from now your doctor's office place that I had to go to? I think you might be right. So, uh, it's very, her voice is very low, but she says, are you from that weird doctor's office place I went to? Now, from what we know about thought forms and stuff like that, if they started using kids to try and create thought forms, it would kind of make sense why she calls it a weird doctor's office. And she asks, are you from there? And this thing even says, I think you're right. Also, Ryan, thank you for coming through today. I'll see you later, my friends. Thank you so much for coming through the stream. Yeah, I'll leave this video public for everybody. Headphone warning. The Johnson administration went on to say that Bro, I knew it was coming and it still got me. Alright, hold up. Let's run it back real quick. Let's take a good look at this thing. Okay. So far from human. Fun fact, I voiced the creature here and did it by breathing in with every word instead of out like natural. <laughs> this has been an actual fact i can't tell if you're joking <laughs> i can't tell if you're trolling me again or if that's actually serious <laughs> but just take take a look at this thing my god no he's serious that's insane except it sounded really good Yeah, you think this thing? Yeah, this guys, this is what this is what you look like when you don't shower. So everybody, make sure that you get to showering, okay? All right, Brooke, thank you so much for coming through. I hope everything is well. Good luck. Good luck with your situation. The thought form forgot to shower. For real, you gotta shower, guys. Oh, sorry. All right, but yeah, she she dead. The administration went on to say that their current projections for a nationwide release are for some time between mid-1966 and early 1967. Citizens will be mailed informational packets regarding the National Access Initiative, including information on how to apply as the program becomes available in our area. Okay, May 18th, 1987. Oh. 
Hello, you've reached Alex Marsh and Tiffany Crisaldi. We're not able to get to the phone, so please leave a message after the tone and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We've been talking. All right, baby. Here we go. Video 10. I'm not going to lie. I did that thing where I do a little scrolly scroll to see if I could grab any images for the thumbnail. And then I stopped myself. So that's why the video started at three, three minutes in just now. I'll be honest. Uh, but we do see that we're getting some Alex and Tiffany again, which I did not think we would get any more of. But here we go. I believe this is, this is the longest video in the series so far, right? Yeah, this is the longest one. It beats out uh, old end, old odd ends by uh, by three minutes. Here we go. I'm excited. I was told the names would be important for this. I was told to strap in for this one. Put my seatbelts on. Here we go. Messages from the dead tape 10. In a forest again. Are we on the mountain? Is that a mouse? Or a rat? Whatever it is, bro looks dead. Okay, we're we're taking it. Uh, <laughs> glove. Could this be the same glove that we saw in video four with the break in? I could be overthinking. Could just be a glove. Okay, so that sounded like uh, Alex trying to call Tiffany. Um, for people watching this on YouTube, Tiffany is the one who lost her baby. We witnessed that in video five. And uh, Alex is her husband. After we lost the baby, um, I stayed home for almost a month. We both took a heart, but I was just really worried about Tiffany. She seems to only be getting worse with time. She spent a lot of time by herself. When it came time for me to return to work, we decided I would call home every day during my lunch break just so we could talk and check in on each other. She always picked up the phone whenever I called. She knew it would worry me sick if she didn't pick up the phone. On that day, she didn't pick up. <laughs> Tiffany, 
Tiffany. Babe, I still haven't heard from you. Hope everything is okay. You're probably just busy doing something, but we've been talking every day since I've been back to work, so, you know. Uh, I'm the hero, I do agree. It does sound like she may have killed herself because of the loss of her child. Um, and that's why she didn't answer the phone for this day. Just, I'm getting a so bit let's worried, continue watching. So please call me back, okay? Love you. Huh? Oh my god, dude, it's it's um wait that where did I just skip? Wait, where am I? What did I do? I think I skipped ahead by accident maybe. I did. It's it's the triangle with the circle in it again. We're seeing this like every episode now, dude. This screams cult. <laughs> this really screams cult. So now... So now I'd like to think... Because if the Unit 13 news channel, right? From that one video also had the triangle with the eye. And then we see the triangle in the eye here in something that looks kind of cult related. Would that mean that Unit 13 and the cult and the cult are connected and they're not separate because I thought they could have been like separate um, teams in this, but it does seem that they are directly connected now, possibly. Let's let's keep watching though. Could be wrong, could be wrong. Could be jumping the okay, gun. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm gonna head home. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm kind of freaking out. I'll be there soon. Come on, I Alex, you, you should have went home after after she didn't answer the second call. Hello. Dr. Heinrich Albrecht, medical examiner, Westfield. May 19th, 1987, 3.23 p.m. Intake report for Tiffany Elaine Marie Crisaldi. Caucasian female, age 28, 39, 26, 33, 25. <clears throat> um, uh, case number 87-091-HA. This autopsy will be conducted at the request of the Adams Police Department. Initial external evaluation reveals a resinous black substance adhered to the face, neck, and upper thoracic region. Samples have been obtained. Wait, Additionally, hold on, hold on. Retracted. Wait, wait, go back, go back. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. I gotta slow it down around this, this section right here. Where it glitches out. I wanted to read... R F V R E V nine six. I don't know if that means anything. It's a haunting image. Okay, then just continues normal. Initial external evaluation reveals a resinous black substance adhered to the face. Neck and upper thoracic region. Black substance. Samples have been obtained. Uh, additionally, the eyes are fully retracted. These observations are aside from any traditional indicators of struggle or violence as a cause of death. A rigor and lever mortis align with the estimated time of death. Of particular note. And the reason for this special 
interest report is an unusual finding on the abdomen, specifically below the sternum. A symbol of some sort has been carved into the flesh. Equally concerning is the absence of hemorrhaging in the surrounding tissues. Due in part to this, I have been able to ascertain that this symbol was carved into the skin post-mortem. In regards to timing, based on my analysis, I would say the cuts were likely made several hours after death. consulting with forensic anthropologists and symbology experts to better understand the nature and potential significance of the symbol. In summary, while the exact cause of death is yet to be determined, it is the carving that requires the initiation of an immediate and in-depth investigation. For sure. This aspect of the case should be treated with utmost priority due to its unusual and Okay, this seems like that the cult got to to Tiffany first. Because that definitely doesn't look like a suicide like we may have initially thought it was. Um, she has black liquid like coming out of her face and then she has a carving on her body of a symbol and he says that it happened a few hours after death. And that may be what we saw with the whole candles and chalk and everything was like her maybe her death ritual or whatever it was definitely odd you guys are saying uh revelations 9 6 and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them what does that mean like they can't die even if they want to Adios, Alban Sim. Good luck with your shower. Cults for Unit 13. I don't... I'm trying to think what would be the point of them having a cult. Can't they just do what they're doing without having a whole cult going on? There definitely is one. It's very weird. They will want to die, but won't be allowed to. Um, that could definitely tie in with Tiffany. I mean, Tiffany could definitely want to die because of all that's happened to her with her child being lost. Um, but I mean, she did die here. They're like going over her body. Unless like, never mind. I don't want to say anything stupid. The cult could be older than Unit 13. That's a good theory. The cult could be older than Unit 13, which is definitely possible. Because if they if they were doing sacrifices to this thing for thousands of years, this cult could have uh, continued on throughout all those years. And uh, now Unit 13 just participates in things with them to try to learn more about what's going on with Mount Greylock. Yeah, it's definitely some thought form worshiping or something. We'll keep looking. We again, we still got like uh, 15 minutes left here, 13 minutes, something like that. So. OK, Tiffany, we're recording now. OK. What? Hey. So, Tiffany. You just had your sixth birthday, didn't you? Yeah. Did you have a party? Yeah. How was it? Good. That's good. You're awfully quiet today. Are you? So she was like.
this stuff was destined to happen to her. They've been doing stuff to her since she was a child. I mean, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but there, there's a doctor and his name is redacted. They don't want us to know his name. And she's six years old here. So her baby disappearing may not have been random at all. And this might make sense if she was targeted for a ritual for her death by the cult. This is definitely a time jump. She's not a baby now. This is definitely like a like we're looking at a flashback here. I'm thinking that this could be Dr. Bernard too, but I feel like they would uh, they would have showed us his name. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Let's let's keep going. This is crazy. Yes. 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 Can you see them right now? Yes. Where are they? Where are they, Tiffany? They're everywhere. Private lock for case file 87-091-HA for my home archives. Today is May 19, 1987. Time is 8.03 p.m. I conducted an examination of Miss Tiffany Crisaldi today. Her body arrived shortly before I was to leave the office for the day, but I decided to at least begin external examinations. Though it seemed misfortune loomed over the proceedings. Electrical flickers and inexplicable drops and spikes in room temperature. Uh, repairs may be required. No, Chief, you know it's more than that. I wanted to refrain from mentioning this part whatsoever, but... But? But I feel compelled to do so. You should. After placing Miss Crisaldi in storage and moving on to cleaning up, my sister Sarah mentioned that she'd heard what sounded like a woman crying coming from the direction of the cooler i shrugged off her remark and let her leave early telling her she was likely stressed or overtired and i continued cleaning up on my own i didn't dare to tell her that i heard it as well Okay, are you ready, Tiffany? I think so. What? Are you nervous? Yeah. Okay. I'll need you to follow my instructions, okay, Tiffany? As long as you do that, everything will be fine. Can you do that for me? Okay. Good. I'm going to play some sounds that will help you through this exercise. Now close your eyes and keep them closed until I tell you to open them. I want you to picture yourself standing outside your house in your front yard. It's a beautiful day out with big fluffy clouds and a blue sky. No one else is around. Now look down at the grass around you and watch how each blade moves in a gentle breeze. Now look forward and see your house. And look around and see the trees around your yard. Watch how the breeze affects the leaves as it passes through. Make the wind blow a little harder Enough so the branches are swaying a little bit. I kind of want to close my eyes and do you this exercise. You can hear rustling of the leaves around you. Wind calms down now, and you begin walking very slowly towards the front door 
of your house. Step. 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 And with each step you take, it looks like the day's getting later and later. Uh, let me sleep. I'm tired. Let's take it easy and not jump the gun here. This isn't an urban spook video, so you don't have to jump the gun like that for these. Soon the golden rays of the sunset are shining against your house. The front door is closer now, but you still have some more steps to go. Step. 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 Now you're only three steps from the door. Step. The sun vanishes behind the trees, going down. Step. The stars begin twinkling in the sky above, and the moon shines its soft glow over everything around you. Step. You arrive at the front door. You reach out your hand, turn the doorknob, and open the door. Your house looks like it always does at night time, except you're the only one here now. You take off your shoes. First the right shoe. Then the left shoe. You can feel the floor against your feet. You can smell the familiar aroma of your house. Everything is in its proper place. You are alone. You're going to walk quietly to your bedroom now. You come to the stairs and begin to walk up. You hold on to the banister as you go, letting your hand slide up. Step. 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 Damn, we're walking a little slow here. You reach the second floor hallway. Everything is in its proper place. You are alone. Nobody else is here with you. You look to the right and you can see your bedroom door closed at the end of the hall. And you start walking nice and calmly towards it. You see the door coming closer with each step. You can see the pink flower stickers that you put on it two years ago and the small wooden sign that reads Tiffany with the little blue bird in the corner. Step. 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 You're at your bedroom door now. You reach out your hand and grasp the doorknob and turn it. The door opens. And you can see that your room looks just like it did the last you saw it. You see the colorful quilt on your bed. You see your small white dresser with all the stickers and scuff marks, just like always. Your stuffed animals are all resting by your purple toy box. You feel comfortable. You feel safe. You are alone. You walk into your room. And that's when you can see something different that's never been there before. Tell me what you see. It's... It's a door next to my window. That's right. It's a door. What does the door look like, Tiffany? It... It looks black. It has weird marks on it. The wood looks weird. Walk to the door and open it. It doesn't matter if you're scared. You must open the door. Good job, Tiffany. Where'd the music now go? tell me what's on the other side of the door. It's a small room. Somebody's in there. No, Tiffany, you're alone. No. No. There's someone here. Facing away from me. He's standing and tall. He's very tall. Tiffany, you are alone. 
Nobody else is there. Now tell me what else is in the room. There's a TV. The screen is all fuzzy. And the tall man is watching it. Tiffany, I want you to focus on removing the man from your mind. When I snap my fingers, you will be gone. You will be alone. The man's shaking. His body is cracking. Okay, Tiffany, I'm going to count down from five. When I snap my fingers, you will return to the real world. Five, you're feeling more awake. He's now. turning around. Four, everything around you is becoming He's amazing. He's looking at me. He sees me. Three, Tiffany, you can feel the chair you're sitting in again. Two, everything around you fades to the blackness behind you. One, the full control of your body. Zero. We're awake, Tiffany. You'll return to reality now. Dude, that was like an experience. I'm not gonna lie. Listening to that with your eyes closed is a whole nother thing. This that sinister music in the background and listening to his voice tell you what to do is definitely like a whole different vibe. Um She refers to him as tall man, that thing in the room, that person in the room. She says he's a tall man and Paul Morelli described what was in the forest as a tall man. I don't think that's a coincidence. Whether this is the first contact or creation of the dude with the cracked mask, or if he's existed already, I don't know. But you could tell that the doctor did not expect this guy to be there. And yet he was, and he seems to be extremely, I want to say extremely powerful. You can hear the stuff in the room shaking during that end part. He's looking at me. He sees me. Three, Tiffany. You can feel the chair you're sitting in again. Two, everything around you fades to the blackness behind listen, you. Listen, listen. One, the full control of your body. Zero, we're awake, Tiffany. You'll return to reality now. And then of course, hold on, I gotta go back here. I think this is just a picture of Tiffany. Oh, God. Jesus. And that seems to be it. Yeah, it seems to be it for that section. Um, is Tiffany like the first one for their thought form experiments? Is she kind of like the start of it, or who knows? I mean, we it's definitely, I think it's definitely something con to consider. She definitely, it is. Someone said that like maybe she's just like very powerful like spiritually and as far as creating thought forms go, that definitely could be a possibility. Maybe she's like a, uh, maybe she's like a prodigy in what she does. Tasty drumstick, thank you for becoming a member. But uh, a lot of things to consider here in that whole thing. Dude, hit, hit, that guy's voice is so, so creepy with that music and everything. That was very, very, very well done. And whoever acted out Tiffany uh, was very good too. Very convincing. All right. Um, we have three minutes left. Uh, let's see, Ratman's got the rat. Uh, Rob also did say uh, in chat before, in case you guys didn't see it, that this person with the glove is not the same person with the glove from the uh, home invasion video. He's going to cut it open and look at it. I'd like to believe he... Um, that he found this this rat on the mountain and um he's trying to see why it died maybe like if the mountain affected its death 
My theory is this is Jim Melgren investigating here. I don't know why anybody else would be around looking at rats. Except for somebody that would be investigating. Gun digest. Black goo comes out that... Out of all the things that could have came out of that rat just now, this was the last thing. What? <laughs> bro, bro, bro just, bro just pulled a tape out of a rat that he found in the woods. Oh, you better play that right now. Do not make me wait for the next video, please. Oh, thank God. Did you see the face here? You could see her face in the corner there. Well, we did say, um, what was that? Revelation 9, 9, 6? Or whatever revelation it was where, um, the person wants to die, but they're not, they're not allowed to or they can't. That definitely seems like it's applying here. I mean, she's crying. Um, she's able to burst this open. She's somehow not dead. I don't think she's alive either, but there's something. I don't know. We need more. I need more. I need to know more about what's going on with her. Like, is she just going to come out of body storage and walk away? Or is that just like her spirit doing that? Is that her actual body doing that? I don't know um, and let's I just want to go frame by frame here again just to see maybe we uh in case we may have missed something here just looks like her face again and then yeah it deforms back and forth gets bigger and that's it. And the people that uh that put that marking on her, so th I was right. This is Jim because they do they they say they do this. Whoever made this tape, first of all, whoever made this tape somehow knew that Jim was gonna find that rat on the floor and dissect it. 
so they are following bro really close but this is the same symbol that was on uh that was on tiffany's body after she died so i'm wondering if we're gonna hear they said that they want to tell jim a story that he's been wanting to hear i wonder if we're gonna hear that story or not in the next video but i i don't think we've seen this symbol before today maybe we have in some very short uh you know flash of image or maybe i just am completely blind to realizing where we've seen this before but this does i do want to believe that this is the cult i just don't know how it's all connected i don't know how the cult connects to unit 13 but it definitely seems like there's like three major parties going on here it seems like we have jim who knows a lot of information you have just not how you think Anybody in chat? Any ideas? Anybody chat? Any ideas? I don't think it's it's definitely not it's not the what's Simeodine's logo look like? Uh, where do we see Simeodine's logo? And we see it in here. Oh, okay. Authorities. No, it's not at all like Simeodine's logo. Because this is Simeodine. You've seen it before, but not how you think. It's like a star with a line through it. I don't know. It's definitely something that's going to have to be looked into further. Um... But yeah, I feel like there's Jim Melgren, right, who is trying to uh, do investigations and look into what's really going on here. He's completely aware that things are not normal and there's a lot of weird stuff going on. Uh, then we have Unit 13, who's like messing with the thought forms. They're messing around with Mount Greylock a little bit. And there's several people involved in that, like Frank Porter, um, Dr. Bernard, who's they're messing around with that. And um, then we have the cult. And I believe the cult in Unit 13 may be more connected than we think. Not 100% sure yet. But I do want to say that Unit 13 is definitely like targeting people. And if they know too much, they take them out. But it's a lot of things connect. Just not sure how. Like, I think it's very interesting that they've clearly been talking to Tiffany since she was way younger. Since she was six, I think they said. But then also, coincidentally, her husband is a part of Unit 13. Like, what are the odds of that, you know? It's almost like things were, like, set up weirdly to all run together like that. So we'll have to see. But that was, that was really good. Dude, that was really good. I love that whole that whole segment. Matt, I believe that you said you and your wife uh did that did that segment. That was very well done. With Tiffany and the doctor. That was cool. I like uh the whole thing with the body examination and um obviously with the tapes after and then the body at the end. It's very, very good. Yeah, I'll try to look into that symbol more. I'll try to see what I do. What does my brain say? My brain says confusion. The best thing I got out of today was realizing that Alex Marsh is in Unit 13 and that this video was dedicated to him. I had no idea, dude. I, like, so I was going to rewatch these videos and I saw this name and I was like, that's that name. I don't remember seeing it in the series, but it's got to be connected to something. I did not think it was going to be Tiffany's, Tiffany's husband, though. Uh, they did say Jim Jim Melgren was former police, and they did imply uh, at the end there. They say that Jim, 
<clears throat> Jim has gone to great lengths before in the past to survive. Yeah, it's impressive you remained alive for this long. But then again, you've gone to great lengths in the past. So who knows what they even mean by that? I still think we have a, we have a lot to learn about Jim. But um, I think that's it for today, chat. I think we're going to wrap it here. Oh, boy. I'm definitely happy we got to watch through all that again because I would have been confused names-wise in tape 10 if I didn't go through that. I'm happy I got to take a, a little bit of notes and whatnot. Um, but I do hope that you guys really enjoyed the stream. Again, I'm going to say it. I've been saying it. Uh, since day one of when I found this channel, the link to Greylock's channel is in the description of this stream right now. So please go over there, please subscribe, and please go watch their videos whenever they come out. Even go watch their videos again now, you might find something I missed. Um, I know the comments on Greylock's videos are always a great help. They sometimes help me realize things that I haven't seen before either. So there's always a great dialogue going on in the comments there. Um... Big shout out to Rob and Matt for showing up to chat today and chatting with us and talking with us. That was really uh, so, so much fun. You editing a video together for tape 10? Yeah, I'm going to use my my reaction from stream right now and then I'm going to add an intro and I'm going to add my own thoughts as an outro after. So it'll probably be out if today's Sunday, probably Tuesday. I'll have it out. So, but I will leave, uh, I will leave this stream uh, up. So if anybody joined in late or anything, you could feel free to rewatch it. I'll be leaving it up uh, public, not just for uh, members. But seriously, thank you guys so much for coming through. Thank you to everybody that showed all the love with the super chats and um, becoming members. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Um, and I hope you guys had a great time. I will be streaming again at some point this week. I'm not sure what day yet, but be sure to follow me on Instagram, join the Discord and stuff. I love to make announcements for the streams and whatnot on there and on my socials. Um, all links to all my socials are in the description down below. But thank you guys so much for coming today. Thank you so much for rewatching the series with me. I'm so happy that we got to do that. We might do this with a couple series just because some series are so, so far in and have so much information that a nice refresher sometimes would be really good. Um, I kind of feel that way about Vita Carnus. I think a nice Vita Carnus stream would be cool one time too. But I definitely want to get a few uh, newer analog horror series out of the way too uh, in the next stream. Again, thank you guys so much for coming through. I love you guys to death and I will see you in the next one. Peace.